Even my murderer isn't really a bad man. <laughs> Welcome to Living a Life Through Books. I'm your host, Dr. Shanaz Ahmed, and thank you for joining us. This is the final part in this series of author conversations with Andrew Siegel, the author of the upcoming murder mystery, The Lime Regis Murders. A bit about Andrew. He started off as an accountant, eventually specializing in insolvency. He says, it's a people-oriented occupation and source of innumerable anecdotes. His writing over the past 30 years has been somewhat eclectic with children's books, horror stories, and thrillers to date. The Lyme Regis Murders is his first foray into murder mysteries. So, with all that said, here's Andrew Siegel author of The Lime Regis Murders. If you ever read Winston Churchill, one of the schools that he went to, they, the head used to beat the boys until they bled. No. Uh, and, and more besides, but well, I won't go through any, any of the more besides. So I just thought there's a story there. So Pretty Boy, Pretty Boy, is mm-hmm. based on that comment, that one comment. And there's one of my, one of my ca- uh, characters who's a journalist in Pretty Boy as well, that, who I rather huh? like. Um, Dear Diary... I love Dear Diary. It's yeah. Old, and reviewing his diary. And the diary starts off with him getting all the spellings wrong because he's a little boy when he starts writing it. And then oh, the spelling wow. gradually gets better. And it talks of the relationship with his mother and, and what happens at the end. It turns into a whodunit, actually. And that wow. happened by chance. I knew where it was going. I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, we can take a left turn instead of a right turn. So that worked out very well as well. Death Zone is just a hoot. Death Zone is based on an incident which happened on Everest. Uh, lots of climbers die on Everest. Lots have been dying recently. Oh, yeah. And some years ago, uh, a party climbing Everest uh, hit bad weather and decided to turn back. Two of the parties said, no, we're going to go on. We think we can get through this. Uh, one of them was a Tibetan border guard policeman, and the other was his colleague. They went on, then they got separated. One was never found again. The others in the party returned safely. But the one that was found was wearing large green climbing boots. And he lay where he died in the, in the death zone above whatever it was, 20,000 feet or something like that. If you get into difficulties above a certain height and uh-huh. you can't help your rescuers, they leave you to die or they're putting themselves at risk. And he died there. And he lay there for years. And as climbers went past him, they'd see the green boots. He was called Green Boots. So originally I called the story Green Boots. And I thought, no, I'm calling it Death Zone, because my story takes place in the Death Zone. Yeah. And it's not, necessar- it's not immediately clear what is happening when you start to read the story, but it is a joke. You just wait till you get to the end. Okay. It's a joke. Well, it's not oh, a joke, oh, like, a, like you know, once upon a time there was an Englishman, an Irishman, and a Scotsman. Not, not that sort of a joke. Okay, it's, okay, it's, okay. It's a piece of humour. Have you ever considered um, writing a comedy or maybe a fantasy? Like Token, you know, like a, a fantastic world where there's no gravity, maybe. I don't know. I mean, just a well, fantasy. science fiction, or, sci-fi. Sci-fi or fantasy, dragons, fantasy. you know, wands. I've got a feeling that that genre is very well catered to, catered for one way or another. Um, it hasn't, it hasn't immediately attracted me or grabbed me. Okay. If it does, if I feel the inspiration, uh, then I'll give it a go. But not, but not so far. So far, what I'm concentrating on more than sure. anything else is, you know, the the crime thrillers. What about comedy? I think you'd be great at comedy. Possibly. Um, is it hard? In that, in that, sorry. Is it is it difficult to write comedy or? No, I don't think it is. Um, I've come up with a few ideas. I even I even thought on one occasion of uh, sort of doing a ten minute stand up routine, but there's only so many hours in the day. You can't do it all. Right. Um, in, the, in the original book Tower, uh, which is as I said based on the life of this Jamaican woman. Uh, I thought, I want to put a comic chapter in it. It's not all gloom and doom. So the comic chapter is when one of her daughters gets married and it all goes wrong. You know, the cat gets drunk, this sort of thing. And I laughed when I, when I rewrote it, when I wrote it at the time. And lots of other people found it amusing as well. 
Uh huh. So it's not the genre, but yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, comedy books are. I wonder if um, you know, I'm trying to think about the Lyme Regis murders. If there was anything funny in it, I don't think it was no, pretty. It's a straight pretty, thriller. It was, it was pretty, thriller. pretty, pretty serious all along. That's I'm right. Just, I'm just wondering what it would be like if you did a straight thriller, but threw in a comic character in the middle throughout. I would say the comic character would be the person who did it, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I'll, I'll give it some thought. You yeah. Know. Yeah, what yeah. That, that's it, great. It surprises the reader when you suddenly come up with something totally against the grain. So, yeah, you never know. You never know. I mean, I um, my favorite thing about the Lyme Regis murders were actually the relationships. That's between, right. Between Tammy and Dove, yeah. And Tammy and Ginny, you have yeah, a okay. you have a love triangle. But here's right. the but the interesting thing with this love triangle is normally a love triangle involves two men versus one woman or. Sure. Two women with one man. It just, That's right. But this one, you have Tammy. She's bisexual. That's right. I was because that was my first thought. I'm like Andrew, how did you come up with a bisexual love triangle in a murder mystery? Yep. You've hit on what, one of the things that I liked about the book. Because okay. it's not, and the murder mystery was important. That was the essence. But sure. I wanted people to be involved. You know, we've got a woman here with endometriosis, a woman yeah. who's never going to bear children until all of a sudden she's surprised. Yes. Um, so I wanted people to be involved, and all being well, depending on how the black candle killings go, I want that to involve people and events. And we may have, we may see some of our original characters again. Who knows? Who knows? That would be nice. That would be exciting. Exciting. That would be very yeah. exciting. You know, the other um, character that was interesting to me in your yeah. book is yeah. Downey. Oh, yes. Because yes. he is just, you don't like him. I never liked him. But That's you right. were still giving him, I guess you were giving him some sort of a silver lining or in the sense of you were defending him and saying that he was really trying to, I guess, be a man, to achieve success in his life, and so this... Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's without... right. He's, a, he's a senior police officer. Right. He doesn't like her, but towards the end, she gets grudging approval from him, and that's a saving grace as far as he's concerned. You know, not everyone's thoroughly horrible. Even my murderer isn't really a bad man. <laughs> well, well... Well, he is, but still... <laughs> Right, right. So it, it that's um, I like the balance of your characters Good, because you. they're not all bad. You tell yeah. you even with um, uh, what's her name, Meg, Meg yes. Copeland. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. With her dealing with issues at home. That's right. It's not just a straight. Hey, this is a murder mystery. You have this di. But these are people with lives. Yeah. Outside that, that was. Yeah. yeah. That's that's exactly it. It's exactly it. And that's it was fun writing. It, it's real fun writing it. And inevitably, you know, all creative people need to be told how clever they are, whether you're an actor, a painter, or anything else. So when people <laughs> come back and say loved it, that's wow. I mean, the reviews, for example, on Beads of Blood are awesome. They uh -huh. really are. Uh, I, who are these people? I know that spine tinglers, they're not big enough. They haven't got the same commitment that, that, uh, uh, that Claire has got. Uh, but they, at certain times, like Christmas, they, they, they gave freebies. They gave away hundreds of the books because people asked for them. And okay. on the basis of those, the reviews, if, if you take a look at the, at the reviews, they are, the, one of the best reviews is a four-star review. And it's signed by somebody who signs himself, Bartleby the Scrivener. Who is Bartleby the Scrivener? So I looked it up. Bartleby the Scrivener is a short story by Herman Melville, who wrote Moby Dick, about a Scrivener. A Scrivener, writers, copiers in the 19th century. Okay. And he was a peculiar character. And when his boss said, I'd like you to do something, I'd rather not. No, I'd really rather not. And it becomes 
a total mystery, ends up in jail, he ends up dead. What motivates this man? So I was flattered to have someone as well read as that give me, a four, give me four stars on my short stories. Well, most of the other reviews are five star. In fact, the average is five stars, which is fantastic. Uh-huh. It's always, so, um, yeah. I, I think with the reviews, the number needs to be around a little over four. Like if it's about 4.2, 4.3 as an yes. average. Yeah, yeah. Well, that my, means my, my you're doing well. Five. Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. And uh, we're waiting to put Lyme Regis Murders onto Goodreads. Oh, well, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, be, because got uh, thousands of ideas, but yeah. Yeah, I think Claire has to put it on Goodreads, and she's planning to do it um, yeah. before your book releases. Yeah, on well, the first. Do of we August. have a book release date yet? She hasn't told first, me. First yet. of August, all being well. Okay, first of yeah. August. Very yes. good. That that's yeah. great. Yeah. So before first of August, we're gonna put your book on. Not we, as in me, but Claire sure. is going yeah. to be putting your book on Goodreads. And I have to uh, take this podcast okay. and edit it. So, sure. So then it'll be, there'll be an audio version the week before. And oh, wow. the week off where, when your book is getting released, so we can go with, right along with that's, that. That's very exciting. That She's is- got loads and loads of ideas. Uh, she wants me to go to local radio stations to do readings, uh, which is fine. Uh, she's got a whole program of things that she's going to be doing. Um, I just wondered whether... Oh, yes. She's got social media, radio, evening events, um, audio, books, um, et cetera, et cetera. She's got a whole program of stuff that she's going to be getting on with. Very exciting. Very exciting. Very talented young lady. Yeah. You know, she's in the Guinness Book of World Records. She got the she longest photograph in the world. Yep, it took, I think, three or four years to get photographs up to a kilometer, kilometer long of people jumping. Um, she's multi-talented. Wow. She, yeah, seems, she, she really is multi-talented. She seems absolutely lovely. <laughs> she is. <laughs> it's, it's such fun working with her. It's uh-huh. such fun working with her. Excellent. So um, before we... Um, stop this is there anything yeah. you'd like my listeners to know about you or your book any questions you feel we have not covered i think looking at the list of topics that we that we were going to discuss fine obviously my main uh, com- uh my concentration is on the Le- lime regis murders i'll show you the other bits and pieces to give, it gives you an overall picture that i'm not just uh, a crime thriller writer I've got loads of other interests as well. And they're yes. all fun. All of them are fun. But The Lion Regis, followed by The Black Candle Killings, which is going to be based on Caribbean, possibly Trinidadian Obia, which is, you know, black magic. Okay. Um, Ooh, which black magic o- o- too. Which, which opens people's eyes. Well, Tammy's father's from Trinidad. My ex-wife is from Trinidad. So, that, so there we go. Um, okay. So I'm looking forward to getting on with that. Anything I'd like to ask? No, I mean, it's been, it's been really fun talking to you. Yes. I've enjoyed the last hour very, very much. It's given me a chance to sort of sound off about the things that I, I like best. Uh, me, all the authors, all the all the different types, all the different styles of writing. Um, what can I say? I like doing it. I propose to go on doing it. And if, 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 if any of those people that contact you want to know what to do about writing, as I said, get on with it. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just Thank do you it. very much, Andrew, for being on my podcast. And I... Uh, Look forward to reading more of your work. It's been entirely my pleasure. Really nice talking to you. And that's it for Author Conversations with Andrew Siegel. We hope you enjoyed this series. Subscribe to this podcast on any of the engines you listen to. We will be having more episodes of Author Conversations and perhaps just musings with myself and other bookish folks. Stay tuned. You can reach me through Facebook or Instagram at Living a Life Through Books. If you found this episode or any of my previous episodes enjoyable, please take a moment to write me a review. A review on Apple Podcasts goes a long way, so I thank you in advance for it. You can also reach me through shanazahmed.com. That is S-H-A-H-N-A-Z-A-H-M-E-D.com. My website and logo was designed by Alia Rahman. She's a St. Louis-based graphic designer and surreal artist. You can contact her for all your art and web design needs 
at aliarahman.com. That is A-A-L-I-A-R-A-H-M-A-N.com. My starting and ending music for this and all my previous episodes was composed by my husband, Brad Slavik. That's it for this episode. I'm Dr. Shanaz Ahmed with Living a Life Through Books, signing off. Remember to water the seeds within you. It's time. <laughs>